Good morning everyone. In my previous video on law and medicine, I discussed with you the convention for the protection of human rights and dignity of the human being with regard to the application of biology and medicine. So basically this Ovidio convention is also known as convention on human rights and biomedicine. So in my introductory video, I discussed with you the purpose and objective of this convention. Why there was a need to have this convention by the European member members and what is the objective of this convention. Now see, this convention is the first legally binding international text, right? And it is designed in such a manner that this convention tries to preserve the dignity of human beings, right? Rights and freedoms of human beings, okay? The convention also provides various prohibitions so that there is no misuse of biological and medical advances. Remember in my last video, I told you that, you know, there is a need to develop medicine and science in such a manner that, you know, the rights of human beings are not violated, right? No doubt that this convention aims to protect the interest of human beings and the interest of human beings come before the interest of science or society, right? So this convention, you know, it lays down various principles and prohibitions that are related to bioethics, consent of human beings, right to private life of human beings, medical research, information, organ transplantation, public debate and so on. All right. And this convention also bans, you know, all forms of discrimination that are based on the ground of a person's genetic makeup. And it allows the carrying out of predictive genetic tests only and only for the purposes of medicine, right? And not for any other purpose that is not related to medicine. Okay, so, you know, this convention, it, you know, sets out various rules that are related to medical research that are detailed, right? And it talks about human beings, where they have to give their consent and where they cannot give their consent, right? For example, this convention prohibits the creation of human embryos for research purposes, right? And it also requires that there should be an adequate protection of embryos where countries are allowing in vitro research. Okay. So basically, you know, uh, this convention also sets out principles where people who are undergoing any kind of treatment, whether they can give their consent or not. For example, children, for example, uh, you know, people who are suffering from mental illness, right? So basically this convention is trying to tell us about the patients and the rights they have. For example, right to be informed about their health, right? Rights of, you know, to live with human dignity, right? The convention prohibits removal of organs and tissues, right? Uh, from the part of human bodies. All right, it recognizes the importance of promoting public debate as well in Article 28, right? In the interest of public safety, right? For the protection of public health, for the protection of rights and freedoms. All right, now moving on to my next slide, let's discuss articles that are mentioned in this convention. Uh, please also remember that, you know, uh, we have already seen in our previous videos, you know, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, right? International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. So basically, keeping in mind all these, you know, conventions, UDHR and so on, you know, the Council of Europe, it adopted this convention, right? to realize human rights and fundamental freedoms, to accelerate developments in biology and medicine, but at the same time ensuring the dignity of the human beings, right? And to protect the human rights. All right. Now see, also, you know, we have seen a lot of international cooperation and national cooperation when we talk about humanity, right? So that 
the humanity can enjoy the benefits of biology and medicine without harming the human life all right now see coming on to the first article the first article talks about the purpose and object of this convention now see the first article says that the parties to this convention the main purpose and objective of these parties will be to protect the dignity and identity of the human beings right and to guarantee them without any discrimination the respect for the integrity right fundamental freedoms with regard to biology and medicine right and you know the members the parties to this convention they will make the municipal laws the internal laws that are necessary to give effect to the purpose and object of this convention now see article 2 talks about primacy of the human being so as i already told you that in this convention you know the interest and welfare of the human being shall prevail over the sole interest of science or society that means the interest and welfare of the human being is of paramount interest right article 3 talks about equitable access to health care now this is also a fundamental right so this convention says that you know uh, the parties to this convention they will take you know appropriate steps and measures to provide equitable access to health care you know to their people right they will try to come out with new schemes new rules and measures so that they can give equitable access to health care to their citizens right so being a part of this convention it is the duty to provide equitable access to health care right and you know that too of appropriate quality now see article 4 talks about professional standards see this article says that if there is any kind of intervention in the health field right any kind of research that will be carried out so it is allowed right keeping in mind the principles of this convention that we will see but you know the professional standards should be uh, you know obliged the professional standards should not be violated in carrying out you know any kind of intervention in the health field including any kind of research all right now see chapter 2 talks about consent that i'll discuss in my next video and in that video we are going to discuss article 5 that talks about you know consent as a general rule that means uh, you know when an intervention is carried out then we need to take consent of the person uh, you know who has the capacity to consent and if that person does not have the capacity to consent then someone maybe the parent or the guardian will give consent on that person's behalf so this chapter 2 from article 5 onwards you will see in the next video thank you so much